Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. It looks like Nvidia's next generation RTX 3000 graphics cards based on the Ampere architecture are imminent. This morning, I woke up to an intriguing post from the official Nvidia GeForce Twitter account. In this post, it says hashtag ultimate countdown with a video in the post which resembles a star or planet that ends up blowing up in space and creating this immense light and darkness. And you can hear some ticking in the background as well, signifying a countdown. Although they say it's a countdown, but don't actually put any kind of timer or date on the video. However, if you look at their account banner, you can see that the same background is there with the same hashtag and underneath it, it says 21 days and 21 years. In 21 days, the date here in North America will be August 31st, 2020. So that is what the first part is implying. It's a countdown of 21 days to which we're all hoping is finally an announcement of the RTX 30 series. And I have many reasons to believe that this countdown most likely pertains to that. Recently, I uploaded a video where I went over numerous leaks and rumors surrounding the next generation graphics cards from both AMD and Nvidia and discussed why these graphics cards are closer than you think. Definitely recommend checking that video out, it's been speculated for a while now that Nvidia will make some kind of announcement in August and then a launch will follow up in September. Even Gamers Nexus recently reported that they have reached out to some board partners and that the cards will be announced on the 9th of September. So I'm extremely excited for these new cards as I have been anticipating them for quite some time, especially since Nvidia's last generation was so underwhelming, so I'm hoping for a good performance jump this time around. I'm thinking that sometime in the near future, I might even make a video that will probably be a little wish list of sorts and what I expect out of these next gen graphics cards. I don't know, if you guys want, let me know in the comments down below if you'd be interested in a video like that. As for the 21 years part, this is where things get pretty interesting because 21 years obviously wouldn't pertain to a countdown of any sorts. I mean, what would they gain by telling you to wait 21 years? It's obviously referring to a previous date. And if you go and look back, way back, on the 31st of August, 1999, exactly 21 years ago from the alleged future announcement date, it was on this day that Nvidia announced the GeForce 256, a revolutionary graphics card which brought a significant leap of performance over its predecessors. Interesting fact about me is this is right around the time I got into PC gaming, but I was just a 5 year old kid who didn't really know much about computer hardware, I was just enjoying myself playing some Need for Speed high stakes. Anyways, over at Anontech, the GeForce 256 was reviewed by Anon when he used to work there, and he talks about hardware T and L, or transforming and lighting, which was a new form of technology back then, kind of like how ray tracing is being implemented today. I highly recommend giving it a read for yourselves, as it was quite an interesting piece, but with the 21 year statement, I believe Nvidia is celebrating the anniversary of the GeForce 256 by announcing the Ampere series, and I do believe, like I mentioned before, that this new generation of graphics cards will be a significant leap from the last and not just performance wise but we'll probably see some new feature sets as well. Knowing Nvidia they'll probably announce their own rebranded version of ray tracing to try and differentiate themselves from the competition. As AMD have already confirmed that since RDNA 2 will have hardware based ray tracing solutions and both desktop graphics cards and consoles, Nvidia always wants to paint themselves in the best picture possible and they'll probably come up with some fancy name for their ray tracing solution, even though the technology at a fundamental level will be the same, but, you know, add some enhancements and performance tweaks here and there that will, from a marketing standpoint, make them the best option if you want uh, ray tracing. It's kind of like what they do with Adaptive Sync. Both AMD and NVIDIA have technologies that in their monitors that, you know, do do that sort of stuff. So you've got your FreeSync and G-Sync monitors, and, uh, you know, at, the, at a fundamental level, the technology is pretty much the same, but NVIDIA chose to rebrand their technology with G-Sync, and they actually do in some monitors have the uh, proprietary G-Sync module, which they claim offers better performance. And going back to ray tracing, as before, they were the only option if you wanted to experience ray tracing in PC gaming. But this is another area where I believe they'll drastically improve performance in and they'll want to market themselves as the leader in this performance segment. I also saw someone jokingly point out on the Nvidia subreddit that 256 times 21 is 5376, which was exactly on point for the rumored specs of the RTX 3080 Ti in regards to shaders. But I guess we'll see 
As for this teaser, apart from it pertaining to Ampere, I can't really see it being anything but that. Some folks were speculating that this could be an announcement for their Quadra line of cards, but the only issue with that is if it was, then this tweet shouldn't have come from NVIDIA's GeForce Twitter account, and we probably would have seen an announcement made from their regular NVIDIA account. So an announcement on the 31st of August, and then that leaves us with some kind of release sometime in September. I'm thinking that the release won't happen too far off. Before I close this video off, I just wanted to go over another rumor which surfaced a couple days ago in regards to the RTX 30 series. This rumor comes from WCCF Tech who claimed to have official partial specs for these next gen cards specifically related to the amount of onboard memory the different variants will have. To sum it up, they've put their information in a little chart and they mentioned that the card which will replace the RTX 2080 Ti will have a whopping 24 gigabyte VRAM buffer with a 384 bit bus, although it does seem a little weird as I thought that this card would, with this much VRAM would have been fitted with a larger 512 bit memory bus, but 24 gigabytes of VRAM, that's a lot of uh, VRAM, but that's for sure, but hey, it could be because their ray tracing solutions are getting so so advanced that maybe they do need this kind of, uh, this much VRAM, but I guess we'll We'll go ahead and see. They also mentioned that the card will launch in the second half of September. And moving down the list, we've got the replacement for the 2080 Super, for which there will be two variants, two different variants, one with uh, 20 gigabytes of VRAM and one with 10 gigabytes. This is actually pretty interesting because before Nvidia would never have two different vir uh, variants of their mid-range high-end and enthusiast graphics cards as there will be only one variant with a specific amount of VRAM, and that was it. RTX 2080 had 8 gigabytes of VRAM, 1080 had 8 gigs, the 1070 had 8 gigs, the 980 had 4 gigs, and so on. There were never two variants, like the 1080 never came with a 4 gig, 6 gig variant. I know both AMD and Nvidia did that with their entry level cards, like the RX 580 and 570, which had 4 gig and 8 gigabyte variants. So it is pretty interesting to see that Nvidia is actually taking a similar approach this time around with their flagship caliber cards and i think they're just doing it to further saturate the market right uh, right out of the gate and establish a leadership ground in regards to a release window the 10 gigabyte model will launch alongside the 2080 ti's replacement in the second half of september whereas the model with 20 gigabytes will have a launch in the first half of october not sure as to why that is exactly but it probably could be due to limited supply of vram next we've got the 2070 supers replacement which will have two more variants as well one with 16 gigabytes and the other with 8 gigabytes the one with more vram has yet to be determined for the memory bit bus and also a release date whereas the two whereas the 8 gigabyte model will have a 256 bit bus again the model with lower vram gets an earlier release and the model with 16 gigabytes, well, it also has a to be determined tag. One thing I will say is that if this rumor is true, then I'm not really happy with Nvidia coming out with a 3070 that will have 8 gigabytes of VRAM. At this point, I would have really liked for them to make these mid-range level cards and up to start off with 10 gigabytes minimum and, you know, abolish these high-end cards from having less than that. And finally, we've got the 2060 Supers replacement with 8 gigabytes a VRAM and a 256 bit bus, and that also has a to be determined tag next to it. But I'm thinking that this card will come much later, probably a release around November, and that was speculated last month as well. So that's pretty much all the information in regards to that. So do take it with a grain of salt. We'll know soon enough what the official specs will be and if these rumors are true. But that pretty much does it for this video. These next couple of months will definitely be exciting for the PC hardware industry. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.